Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're gonna be discussing how we can actually utilize filters within our .NET Web API. We're gonna be understanding how do they work, how do they affect within middlewares, and then we're gonna be actually seeing how we can implement them within our code. So let's get started. So what we're gonna be doing right now is we're gonna be understanding what's gonna happen whenever a request actually comes into our Web API. So let's say we have a request coming in and within this request, we're just gonna hit a controller and within this controller, we're gonna have an action. So the request flow will gonna be something like this. and then. Once the action finish executing, then we're gonna get back a response at the end. And this flow that we're currently seeing here is basically the normal flow whenever we're handling anything when it comes to a web API. We're gonna request, we're gonna go to our API, it's gonna find the controller, the action, the action's gonna execute and response. But this is not the only way it's gonna happen. This is a very simplistic view of how stuff happens. Within .NET, we're gonna have a lot of different layers that's gonna request that has to go through before it actually even hits the controller layer. So we're gonna have some like middlewares available in place, and within those middle words, the request is gonna be basically go through different types of either authentication, authorization, uh, verification, etc. And then it will hit the controllers. So we can see here that within our .NET, there's a lot of different middle words that actually might intercept the call before it actually execute or actually reach the controller. And all of this we have discussed previously, how actually middle words comes into place and how do they work in conjunction with our controllers and action. So on top of that, we're gonna be discussing today how we can actually add an extra layer in order for us to actually manage our actions and this is going to be something called filters so what we want to do is we want to actually attach a filter to our request and through that the filter will actually then forward the request to a response and once the action has finished executing it's going to basically then go to the filter and then instead of the action directly returning the response then through that the response is going to go back and this is what we're going to be doing today we're going to be trying to adding those filters in place and we're going to be understanding how they actually work so what i have here is i have a full example of what's actually going to happen when when the request comes in so this is a http request coming in we can see it's going to hit the middleware so within the middleware we're going to execute some logic once it executes the logic the middleware where it will forward that request to the second middleware. The second middleware will also take this request. It will execute another logic. So one could be authentication. The other one could be authorization. The third one could be logging. So let's add this here. So we can say this is authentication. This is authorization. This could be logging. This could be background jobs. I don't know. It could be something around those lines. It ex start executing an async upload, an async background operation. And lastly, for example, here. So we're going to have authentication, authorization, logging, and the background jobs. And basically, we can see here that the request flow is to go from middleware one once it execute the authentication it will be forwarded to middleware two execute the authorization forwarded to middleware three execute the author the logging forwarded to uh, middleware four execute the background jobs and then here we want to actually start executing the request when actually it hits the controller so here it's going to be the controller so once it actually hits the controller what do we want to do we want to actually run some code before it actually hits the action which is going to be executing and this is what we're going to be doing we're going to be actually seeing how we can build those layers here filters and and these filters here is gonna allow us to actually have much more control about those requests. So we can have filters here for specific types of auditing. We can have filters here for specific types of uh, logging mechanism. We can have specific types of validation that we wanna add. So there's a lot of different implementation that we can actually execute on, on these different types of filters that we want wanna add. So filters here will play a crucial role into the actual action itself. So all of these different middlewares that we have before, these will be executed for every single request coming in. There is no way around this it will going to be so let's say we have an um, an api with 100 endpoints all of these 100 endpoints are going to go through in this example through these four different, different middlewares on the other hand for filters we can specify for every single action its own filters so if we specify a filter that's going to run on only five actions only these five actions will actually have these filters enabled onto them so filters can be on the controllers and they could be uh, as well on the action itself so we're not only limiting it to an, an action it's going to be for all request filters for specific actions or controllers and this is going to be the main thing so we're going to be able to have a much more control about what action is going to be executed for which type of request coming in and basically as we once we the request will hit the controller if we have a, a filter on the action itself so once that request hits the controller the controller then will forward the request to the filter on that action we execute the filter before the execution of the action then the action is executed and then once 
that execution has finished execution, then we're gonna run the code after it uh, from the filter side. Once that's done, then we're gonna be propagating and popping back the response up into the same layer to the same middleware. So it's gonna go through the background jobs, then it's gonna go to the logging, to the authorization, authentication, and then we're gonna get back the response. So all of this flow that we currently be seeing here is gonna be basically building on top of the each other. So it's gonna go through first, second, three, four middlewares, and once it's gonna go through those four middlewares, it's gonna go to the action. Once the action does its work, the filter is gonna be on the uh, executing there as well before and after, and then we're gonna be returning back the response. So we can think this as a layered cake, and this within this layered cake, the filter is gonna be sitting all the way on top, and the uh, middlewares are basically gonna be supporting this. So as we can see here, that this is also gonna run a in a very structured approach. So the middlewares always have to run first, and then we're gonna have to run the filters. When it comes to filters, we can have, for example, within a single action, we can have different filters. So we can have two, three, four filters, and we can actually specify the order so so in this example here we have added another filter so we have filter one here run before then we're gonna go to filter two then once they have run then we're gonna go to the execution then it's gonna go to filter two then to filter one and the nice thing about if we're gonna add multiple filters filters together we can actually add ordering to them so we can say this is gonna run before this or this is gonna run before this and we're gonna be seeing how we can actually implement something similar to this so now that how we have understood how filters and middleware works together let's jump into our code and see how we can implement something like that so in this example here we have the same project that we have always been working on where we have a controller we have a driver's controller and we have an achievement controller we're basically doing a different CRUD operation on our controllers here so we can add a driver remove a driver delete a driver and add all of them we're using a sqlite database and if we go to the program.cs we can see here that we barely have any middleware so we have basically the HTTPS redirection middleware we have the authorization middleware and the map controllers middleware so these are the middlewares that we currently have don't really have any other middlewares running into place so what we want to do right now is we want to create our own filter and then once we create our own filter we're going to attach it to one of these controllers actions and then from there we're going to be seeing how that will work so what i want to do here in the root directory i'm going to create a new directory and I'm, I'm going to call this directory filters i can call it whatever i want perfect so now that i have created filters i'm going to add a new class and this class we're gonna name it my logging okay great so now that my class is up and running what i want to do is i want to inherit or basically i want to implement an interface called i action filter and as you can see here it's asking me directly to implement one of the methods so i'm going to implement this method and I click ok and it's going to ask me for implement another one okay perfect so now that i have implemented both methods we can see here that the default implementation that i need to do which is going to be on action executing and on action executed so the first thing that i want to do to make it as simple as possible is directly output stuff onto the console so console dot right line i'm gonna say this filter executed before i'm gonna copy this put it here i'm gonna say here filter executed after so now that i have done this i now created my first filter and then basically i attached the action to it once i have done this i want to basically go to my program.cs and what i want to do is i want to attach it now just so we can see it works to every single action that currently exists so in order for me to do that on the builder.services.add controller i want to confirm Configure it to actually utilize this filter. So I'm gonna put options, options, dot filters dot add and i'm gonna say new my logging pretty straightforward so now if i want to run this so now that my application is running let's go to postman and within postman i'm gonna get all the drivers and now we should be able to see that i got one driver that currently exists and if i go back to the log we can see here i have filter executed before and i have filter executed after and we can see inside this is my command to the database to execute the to extract the driver's information so we can see here now that directly my filter is actually running whenever i execute any command so if i try to run this again Again, multiple times we should be able to see that this is directly after the execution the filter executed before executing again then executing after like similar executed before then executed after so we can see that this is working as it should be let's try a different endpoint so let's say i want to get driver id specify the driver send we can see i'm getting a single driver here again for this as well i'm getting executed before and we're getting here as well filter executed after so this is all fine and uh, good but filters as we said we have the power to actually specify specify them into a single action rather than executing them on all actions and controllers. So let's see how we can actually only execute this on a single action. So I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to go to my logging here and I'm going to update this to actually be able to specify it and to make it as an attribute available. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to put here attribute. And now once I put an attribute here, it means that I'm actually able to make it as an attribute and I want to update this in order for me to take advantage of that. So first of all, what I want to do is I'm going to put private read only string 
and I'm gonna specify something called a coder name and then I'm gonna initialize this through the constructor. Okay, perfect. And now once I have done that, what I wanna do here is I wanna actually specify the coder name. So I'm gonna put here string interpolation and I'm gonna specify here that I'm gonna use the coder name. Similarly, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And now that I've done this, I'm gonna go to my drivers controller and for the get all drivers, which is the one that we have used before, I'm gonna add a filter here. And this filter is gonna be my logging. And for this, we're gonna give it a name or basically the caller name that we currently specified here. And for this, I'm just gonna call it all drivers. So let's run this and see how it's actually gonna execute. So now this is running. I'm gonna go back to postman. And and if I run this right now, we can see here this is with an ID. I should not be able to see that. So now this is running. I got my response back. If we go back to Postman, we can see here that I did not get that, uh, that logging inside my console. So now if I remove this and I'm now doing get all drivers, I click on send, we get all drivers here and we can see here that I got the filter only executed on this. So we can see filter executed before all drivers and filter executed after all drivers. So we can see here that this filter only executed on one single action rather than having it executed on all different actions. So if I try to put this back here, the driver ID that I have and I try to put it here and click on send, we can see I got back the response, but here we, we can see the filter did not execute. Okay, perfect. So now that I have, I was able to create the filter only on single action and I was able to actually pass information to my filter for me to be able to utilize it. Let's see how we can actually have a filter which is going to be async. So here if I go to my logging uh, filter that I created, let me stop my application. We can see here that everything is running in a synchronous matter. If I want to execute an async one, so I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it my logging async. And then here what I want to do is I'm going to add it as an attribute as I did before. But the one difference that I want to do here is I'm going to put I async action filter. And once I have added this, this is going to ask me to actually implement the missing member and we can see here instead of having two uh, members which is on, uh, on action executing and on action executed I have one single member and let me just put this so you can see it on a single line within the asynchronous one I get only one method and this method is con contain a context and contain a next so here what I need to do is in order for me to make this functional I need to put away next I need to make this as an async and now basically what I'm doing here is if we go back to my diagram I'm actually allowing this to run in a similar manner to this where I'm having the next object in order for me to move it from one to another. I'm utilizing this asynchronous approach in order for me to allow the movement of the request from one filter to another. So if I do here like this console dot right line, I'm going to put this before the yeah, before the request goes execute and we're going to put after the request execute and I'm going to do the same thing as I done here. I'm just going to copy this so I'm actually able to have a reference to who's calling it and I'm going to attach this here and I'm going to put here it's going to be caller name make this as an asynchronous as a string interpolation similarly here. Perfect. So now that I have done this, let's see how we can actually utilize this my logging async. I'm going to copy this action. I'm going to copy the name of my class, go to my controllers and I'm going to add this only on getting a single driver so i'm gonna go here to get a single driver i'm gonna add this here and then i'm gonna specify my caller name and i'm gonna say this caller name is gonna be get single driver so now if i execute this we can see it's running i go back to postman now if i get this run this we're gonna get lewis Perfect. If I go back to Rider, we can see here that before the request execute, get single driver. And then after the request execute, get single driver. This is an async filter here. We can see the other one did not come into place. If I remove the ID here in order for me to be able to get all the drivers and click on send, we'll be able to see I get my synchronous approach, which is going to be filter executed before all drivers and filter executed after all drivers compared to the one before that, which is after the request executed. So which is going to be async or not. Let's just make the text a bit more clearer. So I'm going to put here sync so we know the difference and here sync as well here I'm going to put async and I'm going to put here async. Okay, perfect. So let us run this again. Get all drivers. So this should be the synchronous request. We can see I have my synchronous request coming here and my synchronous request coming here. Okay, perfect. If I add the driver ID, click on send. Now if I go down, I can see my asynchronous one is running and I have my asynchronous one is running as well. So that's great. So one of the last items that we want to cover today is we're going to be seeing how we can actually attach two of them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the asynchronous one 
and I'm gonna add it to get all drivers. So all I'm gonna do here is after all my logging all drivers, I'm just gonna update this here and I'm gonna run my code again. I'm gonna go back to Postman and forget all drivers. Let's see what's gonna happen now. We got the response back. If I go back here, we can see here that first the synchronous one has run and then the asynchronous one has run afterward. Then the asynchronous finished executing and then the synchronous one here. So we can see within this, we are actually able to attach multiple filters together in order for us to get the response that we want and to get the action that we want. And if I change the order of this, so if I put first of my asynchronous and then my synchronous, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to run this again, go back to Postman, execute it, cut back the response. And now we can see here that the first one has happened, which is the asynchronous one. And then the synchronous one has, has executed, synchronous finished executing and the async has executed. Okay, perfect. So within this, we were able to see how filters can actually work in conjunction with middleware in order for us to have much more control about our actions. And basically we were able to specify specific actions to run on a specific request rather than having it run on all of the single or rather than having it running on all of the incoming requests. Filters allow us to provide much more control on what types of, of functionalities we want to add to controllers, to actions. We can specify the orders. We can have actually synchronous and asynchronous filters available for us. With that said, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you have, um, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.